Also, let's stick with South, Southern Africa, where South Africa itself, the IMF, today released that new report that forecasts South Africa's growth. Africa's most advanced economy will be at a lackluster 2% or below that level over the medium term period. The new report comes a day after President Sidi Ramaphosa delivered a lengthy State of the Nation address. Chris Hart is the executive chairman of Impact Investment Africa in Johannesburg. And he joins me now for a dinner time discussion. I'm not too sure if it's past dinner time for you. It's about 8.30 right now in Joburg. So I'm not sure if you have dinner yet. But whatever you've got for tonight. I've, I've had dinner, so I'm actually very, very um, uh, satisfied and ready uh, for, for everything, yes. A early dinner is good. For, for, for your age, for yes. my age, early dinner is good. But thank you. Very so nice. let's have a post-dinner conversation. This IMF latest outlook of a sluggish growth, 2% for South Africa, that must be really be below the belt, isn't it? It, it is below the belt because I think um, the, the economy is already sitting at, at um, overall output levels that were last seen 10 years ago because of the, you know, the COVID shutdown that, that occurred. Unemployment is, is um, already, um, depending on the measure, certainly youth unemployment is in the 70s, 70%, and um, uh, the, the broader definition of, of unemployment is in the 40% level with 36% as the, the ILO definition. This is an unbelievable crisis, and to actually get an indent into this, we need, firstly, a rapid return to the pre-COVID uh, pre levels of 2019. And, um, we, and to do that, we actually need to generate investment into the country. The investment levels are too low, uh, and uh, but the investment conditions are too harsh. Taxes are too high, for instance. Um, the, the, the regulations are too, the, the, the burden of regulation is too high. And I think we did see some reflection from the, the the presidential state of nation address uh, to actually you know try and free the economy up and if if that does translate to actual words it, it would be extremely encouraging and you may well get a, a higher rate of return if the economy goes back to, uh, to you know a reform that is more market driven rather than the reform that is more Marxist driven, which has been happening over the last uh, 10 years or so. Um, and and that, that's basically the crossroads, whether the president can take his party with him on a road where he's actually really admitting state-driven uh, economic growth, uh, developmental state ideology has not worked. And they have really tried and, um, and and basically, as they've tried to go down this, this path, the growth rate really has stagnated. Um, you know, the economy can be described as in, being in depression, where, where the growth rate is below the population rate, the growth rate, which means that from a per capita point of view, the country has been going backwards um, for the last, or almost the last decade. It's been a long, long period that that has occurred. And then coupled with the fact that we have an unusually high unemployment rate and rising suggests that we do need to turn to, um, you know, the alternative methods. The, um, I think the, the unrest that we had earlier in the year really uh, put in stark contrast a very incapable state against a very capable private sector and that, um, that effectively, I think, is, I think might have seen a, a change in thinking to say we need a, a um, private sector-driven growth model uh, where the, the state is an enabling, um, mm -hmm. an enabling agent rather than a disenabling yeah. agent. Yes, uh, uh, Chris, uh, I'm wondering what you made of President Ramaphosa's State of the Nation address. How are your colleagues in the business and investment market? How did they receive that uh, lengthy address last night? Did it touch on all the necessary points, but did it also provide solutions as to where South Africa's economy needs to go? The, 
the words of the of the state of the national address really were encouraging. All right. In other words, it said all the right things, um, or, or a lot of the right things, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's that shift to actually say the private sector and state need to work together. That you can't just exclude the private sector and say this is a straight state-driven uh, policy with. Um, you know, this, the, the the private sector must just adapt. You know, where they where they can. We're not um, seeing an, a, a rapprochement there, which I think is is very encouraging. But those are the words. The deeds, uh, you know, up until now has been the opposite. If we don't see real action against um, corruption, for instance, which is affecting the trust uh, in uh, you know from an investment confidence point of view. If there's nothing there, all right, then it's just empty words. Again, if we don't see deregulation of, of very, very um, restrictive regulations that, that um, really um, are throttling, it's not so much the big business, uh, the, the big corporates, but the small business sector where the engine of growth for job creation takes place. If that isn't the, if, if the, the, the heavy hand of, Overregulation and overtaxation, etc., is not lifted, and we don't see real tangible moves. Then this is just really words um, and and and, uh, and empty gestures that we saw, and we hope that's not the case. But we've certainly seen that's a pattern of empty gestures we've seen, where people speak growth but do the opposite. Uh, we need to see the budget. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how the budget is reaching because the flexibility is simply not there. Do they tilt resources towards investment or do they continue to tilt resources towards consumption? We had uh, almost a great leap forward towards consumption expenditure, which has really run its course. It's, it's, it's not working. We need investment-driven growth. Uh, and for this, we need to actually build our savings. It's really... A reset that 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 we need in, in policy to actually. Okay, so uh, so, so, so Mr. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mr. President uh, uh, spoke yesterday evening and he says, look, uh, the private sector does not have what it really take yet to be able to create jobs to meet the to 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 reduce the level of unemployment in South Africa. So the government is going to continue to give what you call state aid. Uh, is, that, yes. is, is that an announcement, a statement that is stuck very well with everybody? No, because the state aid goes to the large businesses and it doesn't actually go to where it's actually needed, and that's the small business. And that's small businesses where the brunt of the uh, COVID restrictions were actually taken, uh, and, that's where the, and the lowest paid workers were the, where the brunt of the actual COVID restrictions were actually um, also levied. Um, and so, uh, again, it's a case of how do the words translate into action? Um, and, and basically, state assistance um, is basically taking money from the taxpayers and then selecting to whom they want to give it back. All right, it, it's just a plain, simple transfer. And when you've got such a corrupt government, um, one needs to actually have a level of confidence in you know, whether that will actually work. Why do you want to actually take money away from successful businesses and, and put it to what you think might be the winners are? It, we, we know this doesn't work. And, um, uh, but, but unfortunately, it's, a, it's, it's that state-driven ideology that's still uh, ever-present um, that, um, th that hasn't worked in the last 10, 15 years that it's been tried. Um, and... Um, uh, and came to the fore very, very, very clearly when the actual um, uh, unrest and rights broke out in the middle of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Hart, Executive Chairman at uh, Impact Investment Africa in Johannesburg. Do have a great weekend and see you next time. You and of course, much. we wish you folks all the best.